Hey Flosstube, it's Felicity Stitches, also known as Jen. I'm here for my 10th Flosstube video. Believe it or not, I've been doing this for over a year. And I discovered that just about a week ago when I realized, hey, I think my one year Flosstube anniversary should be coming up. I had been seeing people posting stuff about Jessie Marie's uh, five year floss tube anniversary or whatever we're calling it and uh, I thought oh she's been doing it for five years I probably I must have been doing it for a year now right so I go and I check 4th of July 2017 was my very first floss tube video and upload and it passed very quietly I had a new start on the 4th of July didn't even realize it was my anniversary uh, until a couple weeks later, and so here I am with my 10th video. I am hoping to make this short, but realizing that it's been a long time since I made my last video, I'm guessing that it's probably going to be just around an hour. My goal is to make them 45 minutes to 30 minutes long, and I cannot seem to do that. I don't know why. I'm a talker, I guess. Uh, so one of the things that I am going to start doing, and I have talked about this before, is that I'm going to stop editing the content of my videos. A lot of times I will go through and be meticulous about shortening spaces, shortening pauses, because sometimes I will lose my train of thought. It happens a lot for me. I'm busy, I have ADD, and I oftentimes will just sort of, my brain will go in another direction than where I'm actually trying to make it go. And so sometimes it's hard for me to get myself back on track. I'm going to try very hard, and I'm hoping that by giving myself a time, what would you call that, a time goal that striving to meet that will allow me to improve how I talk to you and make sure that I don't pause too much. Part of it is because I'm tired. Part of it is because I have ADD and my brain goes away. Part of it is because I sometimes, you know, I try to film like right before lunch and then I'm talking and talking and talking and then it's lunch. So I think it's like low blood sugar. Who knows what it is? But uh, that's my goal for the channel and for myself. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is finishes per usual. And the first finish that I have to talk about, I don't actually have with me. So I'm going to insert some pictures uh, right here and talk about it while you're looking at the pictures. What you're looking at is a design by Chessie and me. And Chessie and me has great, great patterns, uh, great little designs. You should really check them out. But this one was released at Nashville earlier this year, and the title of it is called Out on a Limb. And it's a little pin pillow and a needle book and a scissor fob. And I actually, I got this for myself, and I started stitching it, and a very dear friend of mine fell in love with it and she had also recently just lost her little black cat which uh, I can't talk about too much or I will cry but the cat that she lost looks very much like this little blue-eyed cat on the um, on the pattern and so I was stitching it and I thought you know what I'm gonna stitch it for her so it was a combination birthday, I love you, I'm sorry you're going through a hard time, also I know you love this, and she had wanted to stitch it for herself, and I thought wouldn't it be cool if I stitched it for her, and then she would have it as a remembrance of me and of her little sweet kitty and, and just all wonderful loving things. So that is Out on a Limb by Chessie and Me. So yes, I'm going to have to stitch that again because I really love it. I think it's a sweet, beautiful pattern. Uh, the next finish that I have, it's not a fully finished like the one I just showed you, uh, but it will be this year, I'm hoping, 
is a little quick stitch that I did by Homespun Elegance. This is Colonial Flowers Revisited and that's very true to color. Those are um, that's a conversion that I did myself and if you want to know what the threads are I gotta tell you you've gotta go on Instagram at Felicity Stitches find the pictures it describes it all in detail and you will see what the conversion is. Now the thing that I learned about myself on this pattern I did this uh, stitching in hand it's 32 count 32 count 32 it's either 32 or 36 I think it's I want to say 32 count one over two, two over two and I used stitched in hand and I used the sewing method so one of the things zooming in here that I discovered is that what's tricky for me with the sewing method is that I don't always remember to get my stitches to go all exactly the same way so if you're looking see on this border where did it happen it happened where is it somewhere I feel like right there yeah right there I got I don't know I don't know how that happens I stitch the same way all the time I think I must have had it turned around in my hand and so I ended up with funky stitches but the thing is if you're looking at it from here or I have a really sweet friend from um, my stitch ins that says if a guy is riding is is literally on horseback going past your stitching if he can't see it then it doesn't need to be fixed and I like I really like that thought process so I made myself leave it and I feel like I'm a better person for it honestly I so I might have wanted to rip it out but honestly I kept making the same mistake so I tried to correct myself whenever possible and it's just gonna have to be a work in progress and whenever I look at that I'll remember the summer of 2018 where I finally decided to let go of some of my perfectionism okay so the next thing we're gonna talk about is whips 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 I am working on I'm so excited. I love this. It is. I was at my LNS and I was talking. My LNS is the Crafty U in Broadview Heights. And I was talking to the owner, Janine, and we were having a conversation. And it came up that maybe I should try to stitch a model for the shop. And I was really honored that she would even want to have my stitching in the shop. She's so sweet for allowing me to do that. Uh, for her. So this is what we decided. It is another homespun elegance pattern. I love these. And this one is Purely Sampler's Alphabet Pillow. It's supposed to be either 36 or 40 count and it ends up being a little over six inches square. But Janine is very much a girl after my own heart and she said, well, let's let's do it big. And I was like, big? And she's like, really big. So what we ended up choosing is to do it on uh, 20 count. That's right, 20 count with number five pearl cotton. So we converted the called four weeks threads to the pearl cottons as best as we could. And this is what it looks like so far. It's going to end up being, instead of 6 by 6 it's going to end up being 17 by 17 It's going to be huge. And I'm just going to try to scoot in here as close as, you, as possible so you can see it. I'm really enjoying it. I am stitching it in hand. It's not perfect. I'm also stitching it in the hoop, so it just depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, it actually stitches up very quickly as long as I can I have to really because I turn it to stitch it 
right? Because otherwise it's weird. So I turn it to stitch it, but I have to remember to keep my X's the same. And so I'm always going by uh, however this flower is, because I started with this flower and then I moved down to the A. So I just orient my X's always to however the X's are in the flower, and then the X's will always be going the same. And I'm being very careful about that because it is going to be a shop model and so I can't just be like oh well it's wrong it's just for me it's just gonna be in my home it's going to be a pillow and it's gonna be in the shop and I want it to be an accurate representation of what the pattern asks for and I also want it to be an accurate representation of what my stitching is when I'm stitching at my best if that makes sense here's the um, here's the threads just so you can see and there this is teal frost this is bark this is brick and this is what is that fawn so those are the, that's as close as we could get it in the pearl cotton to what it's actually called for. It's very, very pretty. Uh, I really like it. So I can't wait to see, I can't wait for it to be done. My goal was to try and finish it this weekend. I'm going to switch that and make it, my goal is to finish it by next weekend. So that's my one whip. And then I'm only showing you the whips that I've made progress on. Uh, the other whip that I have been working on and working on is, if you've been paying attention to my Instagram, you'll recognize it right away. This is Salute to Abigail by Blackbird Designs. I am stitching it on 36 count Weak Dye Works Confederate Gray, which is my favorite fabric. Because, do you see this texture? No matter if you turn it, you know, this way or the other way, it's it's just got a phenomenal texture. Now, if you'll recall, in my I don't know one or two videos ago, I was talking about how I hate Weeks Works fabric, especially Confederate Gray, because it was all wimpy and I couldn't stitch with it and it was miserable. Well, that was the 40 count. I looked at it with the 36 count at my LNS, which is another reason that LNSs are such a blessing. And it's a different base fabric. The weave of it doesn't move like the 40 count does. I can't explain that. I don't know how to make sense of that. But it's beautiful. It's perfect. I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see it. I did a conversion to Belle Swa Silks. And I am seriously loving everything about this. There's some nice close-up. That red looks super red. Now these are two different blues. This blue here is indigo, and this blue here is ocean tide. But it, I feel like it blends beautifully. And then this, this red is uh, cranberry, cranberry, and then the white is icicle. And the problem, I, I stopped after I got the border done, I started doing this flower pot, but I don't like how my white X's look, so I'm going to take those out. And that just, that just caused me to stall, and I was like, well, I'm going to, I'll pick it up when, I basically just put her in timeout for a little while. Uh, let me show you the threads here. Come out. Here's the threads. They're beautiful. They're so nice to work with. And I I'm not joking when I tell you that the 36 count Confederate Gray is like stitching on a different fabric from the 40 count Confederate Gray. I don't know why that is. So that was Salute to Abigail by Blackbird Designs. And the working copy that I use is actually, I take a picture of, one moment. 
I take a picture of the pattern on my phone and I put it onto my Google Drive and then I upload it into Goodreader which I have on my iPad mini and then also on my phone and then I can blow it up zoom in as close as I want to instead of just having a pattern where the size that it is is the best size you're gonna get like you can't zoom in at all to see a detail or whatever I really like that uh, I just still haven't figured out how to mark on it which I would kinda like to do but I've not really ever been a pattern marker so I don't because it's it takes time away from stitching and I find it tedious to like uncap the marker go over the line. I know some people love it because it's one of those like take it from the inbox, put it in the outbox, now you know it's done. It's a feeling of of being productive, but for me I just I'm always worried that marker's going to get on my linen and I'm just weird about it. But that design uh salute to Abigail is from Sweet Land of Liberty by Blackbird Designs. This is a fantastic book. There is not a single design in here that I wouldn't want to stitch. It comes with all five of these. And I love every single one of them. I will stitch everything out of this book eventually. So that's going to lead me into haul because when I got that Blackbird Design Patterns, do you guys feel like Blackbird Designs puts, they, it's not that their their items are limited edition, but I feel like their things go out of print very quickly, and I couldn't have that happen. Like I couldn't, I don't, I can't be missing out on things because that happened to me with a Mirabilia pattern, Autumn Queen, which I have always loved. She might be one of my all-time favorite Mirabilia designs, and when I finally was like, okay, I'm gonna buy her, I discovered she went out of print seemingly overnight it seems because I know I could get her before and then I couldn't and now I can't find her anywhere and it makes me really sad because I really thought she was beautiful so neither here nor there I went on a little bit of a blackbird design spending spree uh, I am not planning on stitching anything in the near future but these are the ones that I got I got this Marianne Blackburn love this bird, love this house, love this tulip. And I love how they take little elements from the sampler and they turn it, like you take this bird and you just do it alone and now you just have this bird. Or you can just do the house. Or you can just do the big giant flower. And I love how their pictures are. It's just, I mean, and I love their colors. I love the, the color aesthetics. I just love everything Blackbird Designs. This is another one I got. This is In Friendship's Way. I love this. This is called... What is this called? Honeycomb Basket. I just love that pattern. I love the colors. And this is beautiful. Bird. Uh, so I was talking to my good friend Yvonne and we were talking about you know what's your thing and she was saying you know my thing right now is farmhouse I love everything farmhouse and if you watch Yvonne she is um, in a farmhouse groove right now like everything farmhouse and it's all so cute so I totally see what she's saying and I couldn't think of anything um, I couldn't think of, like, what's my thing? Samplers? Sort of. Designers? Well, sort of. Blackbird Designs, Brenda Gervais, like, those are my two, my two big ones. Chatelaines I love, although I'm terrified to start a big one. Um, Hands Across the Sea, Samplers, I love them all. But is that, like, my thing? Are samplers my thing? Sort of. But what I realized when I look at... I, what I did was I went back and I looked at the things that I'm drawn to and like I looked at my one two three stitch and some people have a thing for houses I have a thing for birds birds and flowers 
big like flower faces, but mostly birds. So I think that's funny. Look at that little parrot. And there's that one, Hands Across the Sea. What's her name? With the big giant parrot. Love it. Uh, this one is great, though. It's got so many gorgeous uh, designs on it. Here's an antique sampler from 1861 that's not featured on the cover. And here's a, a button box. So cute. I, I love... Whoever takes the pictures of these are, are amazing. And then they have a bunch of these strawberries in there and they all have different tops on them, different ways to, to top them. Here's one that I think is with the with the pretty button on top. I love that. I want to have like a big giant bowl of strawberries. Because why not? But I need to stitch them. Another Blackbird Designs. This is called Sarah's House. I love that bass that spray of flowers. What else is in here? There's one other piece. I feel like. And they give you very good finishing instructions. Oh, here's the other. This is the actual, this is actual Sarah's house. Look at that border. So pretty. And there's the, there's that bowl of flowers, vase of flowers. And then here's another one. A oh, Stitcher's Journey. All of these cute things in here. There's a number of different little pin cushions like that with those Quaker stars on them. Uh, trying to find cute. I'm sorry, but who wouldn't? Oh, look at this. This is gorgeous. But I have a question. Okay, so here's this, which I would obviously put my initial there, right? And it's on a box. And then Tulip House Stitching Companion is what it says. And then here is what the inside of that box looks like. And they even tell you where to get the box and all that good stuff. Love the scissors, little, little pin pillow. It's just so cute. How many of these things can you have? You know, I'm, I want to stitch that Chessie and Me needle book with the pin pillow and the thing. And then I've got, I want to stitch this. And I mean, what do you do? You just put one on every, where, what do you do with them? Do you display them everywhere? I don't feel like my, I have a, I mean, I guess I could, I don't know. I want to know what you do with stuff like that. If you finish things in this way where you make needle books and you make pin pillows and things like that I would like to know do you use them for functional things or do you have them displayed somewhere or do you do like where you put smalls in the dough bowl for seasons do you bring things out for certain seasons springtime wintertime that sort of thing let me know I would like to hear your thoughts on that more haul. I got the, um, what is she called? Fairy Moon. The Fairy Moon. I'm not a big fan of the white dress. You know me and white people. So that's not my favorite, but I'll probably change that. I did get the bead pack for this. And then I got the Merchant Mermaid. I've always loved her. Always, always. She's beautiful. Love the green on the green. And then I got her. I got the Lady of the Flag. And I'm waiting on some very special fabric. And that I'm getting through my LNS. And I am watching very closely as everybody stitches theirs. I have planned 
uh, verdigris conversion for her dress and dark hair that I am getting from a close friend. Diana, it is Kismet Stitches. Thank you very much. And that's where I'm at right now. She's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And then, pause for a moment. I'm sorry about the crinkling, but I'm not really sorry about the crinkling because somebody admitted finally that they like the sound of crinkling, and to tell you the truth, so do I. I bought MH1656. That's old, people. So this is from the private collection of Nicola Parkman. And the way it works is this is a reversible band sampler. So the really bright side, that's the back side. And the side that looks more aged is the front. So you can see, you can still see the hot pink and stuff there. Are we not so lucky that we have someone who is so gracious to be willing to share to put in the work to chart the reproduction and then share it with the rest of us. I am so grateful to her. Thank you, Nicola, for another really, really beautiful sampler. I am so excited to start this and to stitch all the other really big, beautiful samplers that I have of yours. <laughs> okay, so a little bit more haul. I, okay, so Nicola recommended when she, for that sampler there, that we purchase The Proper Stitch, which I own, and a book called The Autopsy of the Montenegrin Stitch. It's by Amy Mitten. The problem is that Autopsy of a Montenegrin Stitch was out of print and therefore very difficult to find. But Amy Mitten was very gracious and agreed to do a reprint. So you can now purchase Autopsy of the Montenegrin Stitch exhumed. And it, if you're wondering if you need it, if you're wondering if it's worth it, it is expensive. But it's an excellent, excellent, excellent reference book. The pictures are beautiful. It's got, it's cardstock, heavy duty cardstock. The pictures are glossy. This is the contents. See, this is the table of contents. So what happened was Amy was stitching a reproduction sampler and it required the entire thing to be stitched in Montenegrin stitch. And she had done horizontal and diagonal, but she'd never turned corners and that sort of thing. So she looked around to find uh, transitions, angles. She looked to find charting of that so that she could get help doing it and she couldn't find decent reference material on it. So she started working out the charting herself and then she thought, well, if I need this, maybe other people need it. And she put together a book and aren't we lucky that we have it. So um, it's really, just to show you, I'm going to just show you one one picture. The details are very clear. The instructions are very clear. There are arrows which show you, and numbers, and there's no, here's a, here's an example. So how to work moving this direction, and then it shows you all the numbers, all the arrows. It's really, really well done. And all I've really done is looked at it and gotten a little overwhelmed by it, but um, it's quite beautiful and exciting. And I wanted to show you, I had seen a picture of something and I thought, oh, this is a good thing to show. Oh, so here's from a reproduction sampler and there's sort of a blown up version of what the Montenegrin stitch looks like. And then also if you look on the front, there's an example of what the Montenegrin stitch looks like. It's a very complex stitch, so I'm looking forward to learning a lot from that book. Thank you, Amy Metten, for the reprint. Next book I got is called Samplers from A to Z, and it's by uh, Pamela Parmal. 
and it's from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. And it goes through alphabetically, you know, like A is for Apple, that sort of thing. Only A is for alphabet, B is for band sampler, uh, C is for canvas work, D is for darning, and it just has a little blurb. So it's excellent bathroom reading, although I would never keep a book like this in my bathroom. Uh, but it's nice to read right before I go to bed or if I just want to learn something real quick. Another thing, I was contacted by a designer. Her name is uh, Rachel Nichols. And she said, you know, I have some, I have an Etsy store. I have some patterns. I think you might like one. Why don't you check it out? And I'll send you one. So this is not something that I paid for. Okay, this was a gift to me. Uh, the Etsy store is called Leah Patterns. And the pattern that I chose is a sugar skull pattern. And isn't it the cutest? Now I realize that this would be more appropriate to stitch, you know, around Day of the Dead time. But I'm going to stitch it around Halloween time. It's going to be my dark 13, dark October stitching, I think. And I'm going to, it's uh, charted for DMC. I'm going to convert it to probably Weeks or Classic Colorworks. Um, there's her website, leahpatterns.com. And she also has an Etsy store. If you Google it, you'll be able to find it. I'm going to show you just a, a little piece of it. It is, so the stitch count is 85 by 14. She s sends it to you. I asked for the print so that I could see how her patterns come. And they're printed on just regular copy paper. It's not super thick or anything. But just to show you, they're done in color. And they're really big. So that, that 85 by 114 comes in four pages so that it's really, really big, really easy to see. All of the symbols are very easy to decipher from one another. There's no, you know, three different angles and is this an L or is this an angle, that sort of thing. They're all super simple to, to differentiate from one another. So I'm really looking forward to stitching that and I will let you know how it comes along. The next thing I want to talk about is my Sampler Guild. I have no idea what time we're doing at this point. Uh, sampler Guild, Sampler Guild. So I went to my Sampler Guild. We have a meeting once a month and I was fortunate enough to have a Saturday free when there was actually a class that was being taught by Marguerite Hogue from Assembler, the Assembler. Anyway, it was a class and she was teaching it. I didn't take the class, but she also did a lecture at the end of the class and we were all welcome to come to the lecture. The lecture was on Dutch orphanage samplers and it was fascinating. She also had uh, all of uh, many of her patterns, her reproduction samplers for sale, and then she had some actual old samplers for sale, and they were all out of my price range, but I was able to take some really beautiful pictures. I'm going to include those here so that you can see them. And one of the things that I was struck by is that they're not perfect. And I don't mean, oh, they've been old, they've been smushed, that sort of thing. I mean, the X's go different directions. They aren't perfect, but they're perfectly beautiful. And I want to try to remember that as much as possible when I do my stitching, that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay to strive to be better, but it doesn't have to be perfect because it's still going to be beautiful. It's still going to be a part of your history and your legacy and what you leave behind. And that's what's most important. When I looked at these, I never thought, oh, well, that's worthless. Her exes are going the wrong direction, all three different ways to Sunday. Never occurred to me. But when I looked at it close up and I was studying those pictures, I thought, wow, 
even though the X's go in different directions, it doesn't change how beautiful it is to me. It doesn't change the worth of it to me. I think they were gorgeous. So those were my pictures. That's another benefit of being a member of a sampler guild or any kind of needlework guild is that you get the opportunity to get free education from people who've been doing this for a long time. She was very knowledgeable and I'm so grateful that I was able to participate in that. And the other thing that I would like to say quickly is my PSA for guild membership is that if you are under the age of retirement and you are interested in doing something like a sampler guild and there is a guild, a needlework, a sampler guild, anything like that, anywhere near you, please join. Pay the membership fee. It's not that much, I can guarantee. Be a member. Participate. Learn things. Because I'll tell you what, I am the youngest member of our guild. And it terrifies me to think that we don't have young young members and I want young members. I would I want teenagers. I want 20 somethings. I mean, I want every mix of person possible. These women have been nothing but kind to me, nothing but welcoming to me, teaching me everything they can whenever I ask, sharing whatever they have with me whenever they can. It's a marvelous group of women. It's a wonderful opportunity and I just really want to ask you all to go out find a guild, join it, participate. Just go to meetings, just learn things. Let's keep this tradition along with the tradition of cross stitch alive because I really think it's important. And then my next last thing is what I'm all into. And the number one thing I'm all into is slow and simple. Life has been fast paced, it's still fast paced and when there's opportunity to slow it down and simplify, that's what I'm shooting for from now on. So that's one of the reasons why I'm filming my videos and I'm not erasing content. I'm not, I'm not editing content. It is what it is. And I think it's important to figure out where your priorities are. And my priorities are my family, my career, my stitching, when I'm, at my, when I'm at my job, my career is my priority. When I'm with my family, they're my priority. And then my stitching. And floss tube comes a little bit farther down on the list, you know. So I have to find a way to do it because I enjoy it, but not make it burdens, burden, burdensome. Burdensome? Is that a word? Not make it such a burden. And I'd prefer to, I mean, if I could have it so that it was set up and I could just sit down and film and I didn't have to set stuff up like my camera in the right way and my lighting in the right way, that would be great. But I do have to set those things up because of where I live in the tower of my mother-in-law's house as opposed to in my own home with my own stitching room. So I have to have it set up special every time. I can't get away from that. So one of the ways that I can quote-unquote cut corners is to cut out editing as much as possible. Okay, next thing. That's enough of that. I'm into punch needle. I have only been practicing so far. I'm working on a couple of designs that I'm going to do sort of myself, but not really myself, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but I've got a couple ideas for some gifts for people I want to do, and so it's kind of quick once you get the hang of it, so I'm working on that. And when I get any farther, I will show it to you. The other thing I'm into is monogamous stitching. If you remember, I got all excited when I was done with school. I was like, I'm going to buy all the things. I'm going to stitch all the things. And then, like, two months into that, I had a panic attack because I thought, I'm never going to be able to stitch everything I'm buying. I need to slow down. And I was also starting all these things, which is all fun and exciting and well and good, but then I had all this crap sitting around, and I couldn't keep track of what I was stitching, why I was stitching it, that sort of thing. So... What I've decided to do is stitching on like one or two things, move on to the next. One or two things, move on to the next. And my big projects might wait until I can either get good enough to stitch them in hand 
or I can find a way to have a designated stitching spot. So I don't know. It's all up in the air, people. The next thing I'm all into is meeting up with stitching friends. I love to do this at my LNS, the Crafty U. And I've also been able to, you know, I have a couple of, of friends that I chat with on a regular basis, and I love that so much. Can't even begin to tell you. And then I also have meetups that I've been invited to. Most recently, there was one in Gettysburg, and I wasn't able to make it, but I really wanted to come. I think it really would have been a great day. So remember that you don't always have to go to a retreat. You can create mini retreats. You can get together with people. You can rent a bed and breakfast and get six to 12 of your best stitching friends to come along and make a weekend of it or make a week of it, whatever. You can go on a vacation with friends that you love that are stitching friends. You don't have to get into a retreat. You can make your own experiences. Don't forget that. There are lots of different ways to do that. Lots of different ways to interact. And you should explore any and all of those. Just my thought for the day. Okay, last thing, floss tubers I'm all into right now. Uh, kitten Stitcher. The stitching slash craft room is amazing. Amazing. I love it. Love your videos. Can't wait to meet you in October. And I have to do a shout out about your zine because it's amazing. If you are aware, the kitchen, the kitten stitcher, uh, Teresa Bennett, has put out a zine. So it's like a magazine, but it's online only. And she has a background in print media. And it's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's full of wonderful content. And it was well worth the cost. And I'm super excited. I can't wait to see what else you have coming out. I sit and read a little bit on my phone and whenever I get a chance. And it's been a great thing to uh, have, to learn from. It's been wonderful. So thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Mischievous Stitches. Lori, the pin stitch tutorial is fantastic. Now, I've been doing the diagonal pin stitch for a couple of years now. I learned from Vana who talked about it in a couple of her videos. But I always did it from underneath my fabric. Lori teaches how to do it on top. And it's a game changer. Absolutely a game changer. She also teaches how to do it, how to end with the pin stitch, which is something I could not wrap my brain around. But her video explains it and demonstrates it beautifully. And I think you'll love it. So I think you should go and check that out. I'll have it linked below. Next, another new favorite video, which is an old video. Donna Ray Barrow of Flannel Jamie's Farms had a conversation with Pat Ryan about samplers. It's video number 10. And I'm telling you, Pat Ryan has like encyclopedic knowledge about samplers. It's fantastic. It is one of the best videos I've ever seen. If you want to learn more about samplers, why they're fascinating, this is a great video to watch because it really does teach you some wonderful things. Video number 10, I will link it below. And then last, certainly not least, most of you know this already, but Mrs. Milky Bar Kid has started making videos again. And I'm excited. She doesn't make a lot of them. She doesn't make them all the time. She left it open, sort of, I'll make them when I feel like it or when I don't feel like it. But... The ones she's made so far have been fantastic, and I've really, really enjoyed having her to listen to again. It's been wonderful. So, on that note, that's it for me. I have no idea how long this video is. I'm fingers crossed it's 45 minutes or less. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so until next time, may all the things that you stitch with your hands show your heart. I hope you have a great weekend, week, month, and I will see you soon. Bye.